Okay, so I'm going to record this as well, and we'll put it in the portal so that you can watch this a little bit later too if you miss anything. Um, and again, just put, just type in any questions that you have. So first of all, I just want to go over um, some of the items here in the pseudo motor sales uh, portal. I know again that we've gone over most of these already. Um, I just want to clear up a couple of things. So basically, just so that you know, this is a demonstration video uh, that you can give to the doctors. It shows how the device actually works. They usually want to know how it works. So this is a great um, seven-minute video for you to give to the doctors. They can they can see what it's all about. Um, this is just some notes that I took from the pseudo motor certification test. So it's just um, some do's and don'ts and uh, some of the important um, highlights of what the program does. This is a trifold um, brochure. This is the inside, the outside. Outside you can put your name um, and all of your information so that the doctor can get back to you directly. Um, this is just an overview. Um, oh, this is actually the PowerPoint presentation. So this is the PowerPoint presentation that we give to the doctors once you bring them uh, to a webinar. Um, let's see, the pseudomotor device worksheet. I'm going to get that up for you to see. Um, let's see, the contract. Here it is. All right, so this is the pseudomotor device worksheet. This is one of the, um, the forms that we have you fill out for the doctor. Okay. And the physician contract request form. So this is what we need in order to get your doctor. Um, basically, it's a request to see if they uh, if they qualify for the program. So you just need to fill all this out and submit it to us, and then it takes just a couple of days from there to see if they qualify. And let's see the test report. So this we like to give to the doctor so that they know what the test looks like. Um, which they'll be reading to the patient. So this is a, a copy of a sample of the report that they get from the pseudomotor device. And let's see, pseudomotor detail sheets. Uh, this is another, this is something that you can give to the doctor to show them uh, basically, that we are that this device is recommended by the American Diabetes Association and a bunch of other accredited associations as well. It just has a little bit of details on the device. Let's see the physician presentation. This is something. Um, it's it's like all of the medical details that we don't necessarily know about um, for the doctor to go through on his own so he can see, um, you know, exactly what the device does. And then there's a leave behind and the, um, this is all of the states. And so we have exclusivity in these states. That means that, uh, there are no other companies who have a, a machine similar to ours. These ones are open, which means that they could possibly just buy the machine and not do our program. And then these are closed states. I mean, you could still you can still um, market to the closed states. You just can't mass market to them. So, for instance, you can't send out email blasts. Uh, you can't send out um, fax blasts to these states. It is illegal. Okay, and then we have the testing Q and A, um, which is here. Let me open it. Okay, hold on. I have a couple of questions. Let me just go through those really quick. The trifold is patient oriented. Do we have something similar that is more physician oriented? Hmm. Well, um, some of the other things that I showed you, I'll go through uh, some of our other materials and see if there's anything else. Um, oh, and Vinny's here. <laughs> hey, Vinny. Okay, so this is the uh, Q&A. So these are just some popular questions that they have, that physicians have while you're going over. Uh, so you can prepare yourself with this or you can just bring it in and, um, and show. Oh. And uh, let's see. 
Yep, so that's just another little tool for you. Okay, so that's basically the pseudo-motor sales. As I said, we've already gone through this. If you have any questions about that at any time, please give me a call um, or or give me an, send me an email. My number is 754-701-2967 um, or just send me an email. It's my first dot last name at medtechcorp.com, which is netty.emery at medtechcorp.com. All right, so now let's talk about the new labs that we have. And just put your questions away. You can go ahead and, and send me any questions that you have throughout, um, and I'll try to get to them um, as I can, okay? And yes, I've been playing with a fancy new um, <laughs> presentation software here. So these are the states that we don't have licensed yet. Um, California and Florida are supposedly supposed to be happening soon. Um, I don't know about the other states. So if you're in any of these states and you don't want to um, stay for the presentation, I understand. You can go. Um, you can always watch the the recording at any um, at any point. Okay. So unfortunately, New York, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Illinois, Florida, and California for those who are just listening in. Okay, and a little about billing and payments. Um, so the, these labs, because they're in network, um, or because it's in network, you're going to see higher payouts. The payouts are going to be happening in a shorter amount of time. It's 30 days instead of 90. Um, they have an in-house billing department, which has a bunch of its own perks. Um, they are an established hospital contract and all of the blood and urine is processed in-house. So that, that, I mean, that has a lot to do with why they're able to, to do everything a lot quicker. Um, and also, very importantly, the lab does not send patient to collections. So what they'll do is they will send the patient a bill the legal amount of times, which is three times. And then after that, if there is any portion uncollected, they just write it off. Um, they don't send it off to, to collections. And they also, so the billing department will explain to the patient when they get the EOB, which is an explanation of benefits, um, exactly what that is and that it's not necessarily a bill, um, which is why a lot of patients kind of freak out and call the doctor's office. So they, they do a lot of preventative, um, take a lot of preventative measures. And these are the tests that they're offering at this time. Um, we've seen toxicology and DNA before, the pharmacogenetics. Uh, we are also going to be offering OBGYN um, prenatal genetic screening. Cystic fibrosis is coming soon by December 15th. Uh, we have allergy and blood wellness, as well as cancer markers, which should be coming um, very soon, sometime this week, or at least by the 15th. Okay, and toxicology, most of you have um, done this before, but um, these guys these guys are a little bit better with, with that as far as what the doctors like to do. So the physicians can order a custom panel if they want to. They don't necessarily have to. Um, another thing is that they're not expected to perform a, a certain amount of tests like they have been in the past. Uh, they can kind of pick and choose what works for them. Um, they're not their their compensation comes through the office visits and um, and return visits and things like that. Uh, so they can choose confirmation only if they like, or they can choose presumptive screening. Um, they really have the autonomy to choose what they'd like to do. The DNA testing that they offer are pharmacogenetics, as we've seen. They have a very extensive list of biomarkers. Um, they have prenatal screening pilot happening right now, um, which is genetic chromosome testing on the, the fetus. Um, they have cystic fibrosis testing coming as well. Um, and we may actually be the first to offer this, so that's pretty exciting. Okay, and allergy, which I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time for. 
um, is finally here. So the allergy testing that they do is a blood test, which is um, which is a lot more precise. They use the Hitachi platform to test for 61 allergens. The Hitachi platform is nice because it breaks it down into regions. Um, so it tests the most popular allergies in the region that you know where you're living. Um, and this allows the doctor to determine additional treatments, thus creating repeat clients, right? So they find out that they're allergic to this, that, and the other thing. They have to come in once every three months for treatment. That creates additional revenue for the doctor. Okay, and the blood wellness test. This, uh, it covers a wide range of blood tests for males and females. Um, it is a complete metabolic panel, uh, basically a wellness visit, and again, the doctor is increasing their panel and the products that they're able to offer and um, creating repeat business. And as we said, these are the pilots that are happening right now. The prenatal screening uh, will be able to screen for the genetic mutations and the cystic fibrosis screening that we just mentioned. Okay, and so the average reimbursements that we're looking at right now, um, this is kind of more, um, this is more Fred's deal. If he, I'm going to unmute him, Fred, do you want to talk about this? Okay, guys. Good evening. Uh, thank you so much for being with us once again. And the average reimbursements, very simple. Okay, because the lab, and this is the most important part because the hospital and the lab work together and are contracted with on our in network with the insurance companies we are looking at with toxicology 2 to 3000 with dna 2 to 3000 now be very aware of this dna it, in the past we should uh, we used to tell you toxicology goes with private insurance and dna goes with um, medicare okay right now everything that Nettie and I are going to be discussing is with private insurance. Okay, so DNA with private insurance is reimbursing at a very high rate. Okay, it's not like before, and this is the very big difference, and that this is what we're so excited with this lab. Okay, DNA you're going to be looking at two to three thousand, allergy two to three thousand, the wellness twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred. Obviously, prenatal screening and cancer markers are yet to be determined. Okay, now keep in mind what Nettie was saying about the 30 days. Absolutely. In the past, you were hearing that 60, 90 days was the time frame for us to get paid. Therefore, you would get paid after that. Okay, there's two things that have changed dramatically with this. Now it's 30 days. Okay, so you're going to be getting paid a lot quicker. I would still be looking at roughly 45 days. In other words, everything that is being has been reimbursed from the 1st to the 30th, you'll get paid on, on the 15th of the following month, obviously. Okay? So let's say that we're in December. Let's say that this was November and you had been working with a doctor. Anything that you did from the 1st to the 30th of November, you would be receiving your check on or around the 15th of December. It is a complete turnaround from where it was before. Okay, so that to me and I know to you guys is very exciting and to us too. One of the biggest challenges that we had was getting paid from the labs and the time all this was taken. Okay, These, this lab is in network. The part that they have a hospital contracted is what makes this work so, so well. Okay, so I cannot stress that point enough. Now, also, the other part that is very important, okay, Nettie mentioned the ANS1. Please remember, the ANS1 is the part that is going to increment the income for the doctor, the ancillary income. He's going to see money from that. Okay, from this, he will see money in the sense of the additional office visits and all the products that he's going to be offering. So we usually run into two types of doctors. One is the one that is very interested on the patients, 
and somewhat interested in the money. The other one is that he just wants what's best for the patients, and he's not that interested in the money. And then the one that we rarely see that is just interested in the money. Okay? So, guys, with this, with the ANS1, as long as the practice qualifies, and that's the most important part, pre-qualify the practices. As long as the practice qualifies, even on the low end, the doctor or that practice is going to be seeing twenty-five to $30,000. And you got to remember, if you go to a practice that has two doctors, and maybe one of them is three days a week, the other one does the other two days and maybe works one more day, that ANS1 can go for that practice. So if that doctor is, in particular is not seeing enough patients by himself, as long as there's somebody else in that office that can get us to the numbers that we want, we're in business. It's as simple as that. Okay? Nettie, please take it away. I'm going to mute myself. That way you don't hear any background noise from my phone. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Fred. Okay. All right. So a little bit about the paperwork. Um, there's a lot of paperwork, so we don't really need to go through uh, in detail everything. I just want to give you an idea of what type of paperwork you're going to be dealing with. So, of course, there's requisition forms. Um, let me just take you through what those look like quickly. We have um, blood wellness. There is, let me see, whoops. So I can go through this. Um, so the blood wellness just checks every system once a year, so it's an annual check, um, and it checks every system in the body, and um, the cardio, endocrinology, liver, lipids, um, those sort of things, and the allergy panel as well. And so this is just an assignment of benefits. Uh, and here we have the UDS form. Uh, so this is what I was talking about in the beginning. They can fill out a custom order, a custom test order if they want. Um, it just tells the lab what the doctor wants to run every time for every patient. So they say, I want to do this, 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 every single time on every patient that I send through. That's a custom order. B, um, the first box is for all of the medically necessary uh, catch-all. You can't really over-order or under-order for the box below. Um, is to just order individual drugs. Okay, so this this box here below can be a bit of a problem because the doctor has to make sure that they mark every single box that applies to the medication that the um, patient is taking. And if they forget to check one, the lab won't report it, and that could be a problem. Um, so while we do recommend that they do um, either A or the top here on B, uh, they can they can choose whatever works best for them. Okay, and this is just a breakdown of the drugs that they look for in each test. And this is the DNA uh, requisition form. There's a complete pain, psychiatric, and cardio um, panel. So if you are a pain doctor, for instance, we do all of the pain meds for you. So they'll just check all of those and not these unnecessary ones that would never pertain to you. So that's nice, too, and doctors like that, they're not overcharging their patients for that as well. Oops. Okay, so now we have the uh, lab test forms. These include the physician signature account record, which just authorizes the lab to perform tests if doctors forget to sign. Um, so it's basically, if you guys remember, in um, when we were doing the compounds, the... Um, uh, what was it called? The the compound change approval form. So it was basically um, if saying that if something wasn't working, then then they could change it for them. Um, this is just basically saying if they forget to sign it, that they can still um, that they can still perform the tests. And the account registration form. So quickly, these are what those look like. Okay, pretty basic. And then the patient forms, the information sheets, these are basically um, 
so it's the as I was saying before, they follow the me Medicare guidelines, they protect the doctors, and they explain the explanation of benefits to the patients. It's basically uh, telling the patient that they're not going to send them to collections. Okay, and so uh, if I may interrupt for yes, a second, Mary, uh, this part is very important because we, if you guys remember in the past, we had the Rainbow Advocacy Group, which would take care of explaining all of these things to the patients. In this sense, this lab has taken upon themselves to create this. And the best part about this is when the patient calls, they will be explained why this test, this pamphlet that they will be given, explains why the test was ordered, why it's important, and everything else. And if they happen to get an EOB, they can call this number, they will get the explanation. If there is a copay, okay, they will get a bill. And they will tell them, they will get a bill for that copay. By law, they have to bill them three times. They will also let them know not to worry. They have to follow the law. And they will be receiving that bill three times. And then that will be it. But it will be explained directly by the lab. This to us is music to our ears. It really is. Because one of the stresses that doctors had was patients calling them up and tell them, look, I received this, I received that. This is a lab putting themselves on the line saying, have your patient call us. We will reassure him, we will take care of that problem for you. Okay, I know you guys cannot see this very well because it doesn't come through very well, but this is something that is going to be uh, delivered to the doctor along with requisition forms and everything else to be handed out. Okay. That was my two cents. Ahead, <laughs> Thanks. Okay, and then the doctor onboarding um, forms. So there's the hospital registration forms. This is to utilize their platforms, the hospital's platforms. Um, you most likely should fill out the forms as much as you can and then just have the doctors sign them. As you know, doctors hate filling uh, out forms. And then there's the drug screen sheet for when I was talking about the custom order form. Um, and the lab director statement uh, just explains how and why the tests have been ordered and the doctor information sheet. So they look something like this, custom test order form. They can check the, the substances that they want to use. New client information form, pretty standard. And there we go. All right, and now just a little bit about how to approach your doctor um, with with um, these programs. So basically, we suggest that you just ask what his current challenges with his existing uh, lab services are. Most of them will already be using lab services um, for at least toxicology, um, maybe a couple of the other ones. A lot of times they won't be in network, so they're gonna be having a lot of problems with their, with their labs. So just let him tell you how to sell him. You're just gonna let him talk, repeat the problems, um, and, you know, let him figure out some of the additional issues that he's having with the lab. And then just say, hey, Dr. Smith, um, a lot of these physicians that I speak with are experiencing similar issues. If I can show you how we can prevent uh, these problems, would you switch to our lab? Um, and Fred, do you have any other suggestions? In that sense, it, it's very simple, like Nettie was explaining. Uh, sometimes we go very overboard on trying to sell us, okay? The easiest way to sell something is to listen to the, prob to listen to the problem that they are giving you and actually agree with the problem that they're giving you. And then at the end, you tell them, look, I have the solution for you. Let me explain to you how it works. And then you go through with this. One of the best things that you're, you're going to see with this is that you're offering a service now to them. Okay? Before it was ancillary income, ancillary income, ancillary income, and that was it. Okay? Now we're offering a service that, yes, they can get ancillary income. How? For example, just like we did before, this lab is going to send them the clear cups. Okay? which they don't make any money on. 
but you know, doctor, if you want to make money on this, then you can go ahead and order from wherever you want. We can suggest some places. Order from wherever you want. Uh, POC cups. Okay, they will have a cost of roughly five dollars for you. Our physician support department will instruct you on how to bill for those cups, and you will get reimbursed by the insurance. You will get reimbursed anywhere from 25. We're supposed to say from 25 to 60. Reality is that they get about 48 to 50 dollars. Okay, reimbursed. So that is something that they get right then and there, but they're not getting it from us, which is the most important part. We are selling this service. We are selling how good the lab is. We are selling the DNA uh, test that includes the prenatal, that has the cancer markers, that uh, will have cystic fibrosis. We're selling all of those services, the allergies. Okay, That is what we have to look at. We have to make ourselves look a lot better than just, hey, doctor, you want to make some money. That goes with the ANS1. But guess what? They have to qualify for that. Okay, so it's not just being very on hope. Okay, you have to really let them know about us. Okay, let them know about the test. Let them know about everything. And as you can see, you're going to be making quite a bit of money on this. I know this is December. I know that at some point in time it is a very good month for doctors but at the same time it's not the easiest time to go talk to them but you guess what I was telling Nettie the other day that one of the best things that you can possibly do talk to the doctor but tell him that you only need one or two minutes of his time and tell him look doctor I'm gonna leave with you things that I would love for you to read I'm not gonna talk to you all day so I'm not gonna take up your time okay but read this Here's the ANS1. Here's how you're going to make money. Here's what you can do. And you're going to have questions. Once you have the questions, we can talk. Here's all the tests that we can do. Here's how we can help your patients with the rest of the things. Take a look at it. I don't want to take any more of your time. If you can do that, if you can take a minute of the doctor's time that, that day and leave them with that, more than likely, you're going to get a call back. And if you do that, instead of having to wait to see and spend 10, 15, 20 minutes with a doctor, if you can say in one minute what you're interested, leave him, leave him the information. We're going to give you that. Leave him the information. You can possibly visit 10 doctors in a day, 15 in a day, and they're going to start calling you back. Remember, you're getting reimbursed for the ANS1, $1,000 a month for each machine that you put in place, period. There's no such thing as how many tests they did, how many tests they didn't do. Forget about that part. As long as that machine is working, you're getting 1000 a month. So if you have 10 doctors that have the machines, just on the machines, you're making $10,000 a month. It's as simple as that. And we already have doctors that are very, very happy with the service. Okay? So that and leave the other part, the tests and all that, as a service that we are giving. Obviously, if a doc, if you run into a doctor that's very interested in just making money, okay, then you might want to tell them, look, there, there might be something that uh, that we can do, and you get them to talk to me. Okay, it's as simple as that, guys. Okay. Nady, I don't know if you have anything else. Uh, I don't think so. I think that's about it. Yep. Um, so if anybody has any questions, I didn't see a whole lot of them um, tonight. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Scott, did you like that? <laughs> um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, you can also... Great, I'm glad. You can send me an email, like I said. My Here, I'll put it up here so that you can see cuz i my name is a little strange 
Okay, so this is my email address, netty.emery at medtechcorp.com. Uh, give me a call at 754-701-2967, and uh, let's start making you guys some money. But all right, it looks like nobody really has any questions um, for us tonight, so thanks for joining us, and um, I don't know, have a, have a good night. Take care, guys.